Folks, it is good to be back. And I'm going to have to ask, are you buckled in? Because this is going to be a weird one. A tweet has been making the rounds on the internet of this, a group of servicemen and women taking a selfie with a member of their chain of command, more commonly referred to as Kamala Harris, the vice president of the United States. Vice president is in the chain of command, right? Hmm. That would have been a good thing to check. Before we get into this, though, I have a few things to address. There is a concern that they are out of uniform because they don't have their covers on. And I only bring this up because I've seen the complaints about it. They're on a flight line, which is usually a no-hat zone. It'd be pretty unfortunate for a hat to get sucked into a jet engine, right? Not really good for the hat or the jet engine. And, oh no, my hat's falling off, let me jump and catch it into helicopter blades. And now I don't have a hand. Am I exaggerating a little bit? Yeah, okay, fine, sure, maybe, yes. Yes, I am. But I can tell you that flight lines are generally no hat zones. And there's an airplane right there, so that is a flight line. There have also been comments that these people lack gray hairs and must therefore be inexperienced. To those of you thinking the same thoughts, I encourage you to film yourself next time you're telling the 19-year-old soldier returning from a combat deployment that he or she does not have experience because his or her hair isn't gray. I'm not telling you to do it. I'm just saying that if you are already going to do it, I'd like it to be filmed so that I can watch everybody in the general vicinity of that incident disagree with you. And to the people who think that these are soldiers, well, I'll let Ryan Macbeth explain. These service members are Air Force. You can tell by the Spice Brown name tape and the fact that they are smiling. It's funny because it's true. Now, this image actually appears in three different tweets. The one you've just seen, in which N. Wokeness could maybe just be asking an innocent question after having a decade-old cataract issue corrected. This image, in which N. Wokeness playfully tells us they've never served in a military without telling us they've never served in a military. And this image, which is just a fun demonstration of cherry picking. Here, let me show you what this looks like in reverse. China's military. Our military. Wait, let me try that again. China's military. Our military. Huh. I bet that didn't take too much muscle to launch, right? It's not like they're throwing those things at the enemy. Now, it might be tempting to say that this exercise that the Chinese soldiers are conducting is actually very strenuous. But on the other hand, these kids didn't seem to be struggling with it too much. It's almost as if looking like a Hollywood actor isn't necessary to conduct the tasks of the military that you're using for comparison. I went through basic training. I promise you, these kids in these chairs could be trained to wear that gear and hold those weapons and yell. Ah, yeah, it's not really that difficult at all. Weird. I had a lot of thoughts about this, so bear with me as I use the army as an example of why end wokeness is wrong. It's the branch that I'm familiar with. When it comes to army training and exercises, this type of physique isn't terribly useful. Stamina is actually often much more effective than raw strength, and while strength will often increase stamina, this isn't generally what that looks like. Let me give you an example. This is Arnold. You may recognize him as this guy in this photo. Now look at those legs. Those are some pretty beefy boys. But do you need that much muscle for combat? Let me show you someone else. This is Elliot Kipchoge. In near perfect conditions, he managed to run a marathon in just under two hours, averaging one mile every 4.5 minutes. That's over 13 miles per hour for 26.2 miles. Not only is that insane, that's also faster than any required passing score for a running event in any mandatory U.S. Army-wide physical fitness test ever. You know what? Let's go down that rabbit hole. Being able to run in order to gain a tactical advantage in the Army is incredibly important, but the first mandatory Army-wide fitness test appears to have only been implemented as recently as 1959. Wow! And a passing grade for soldiers was a one mile in eight minutes and 30 seconds, which is merely seven miles per hour. Now, in 1973, this changed to two miles in 20 minutes and 33 seconds for males between the age of 17 and 25, which is 5.8 miles per hour. In 1980, soldiers were required to run two miles in 17 minutes and 55 seconds, which averages to 6.7 miles per hour. Nowadays, the slowest run time for males is two miles in 22 minutes. But to be fair, we have the sprint drag carry event as well, which is where thigh muscles really do come in handy. And OK, the other tests had other events as well. And Elliot isn't carrying, I don't know, up to 100 pounds of gear. And soldiers aren't generally running for 26.2 miles. Usually it's just like a, a short sprint or a long ruck, which is often much slower. So let's take a look at the world's best sprinter, Usain Bolt. Wow. Those legs are still a lot skinnier than Arnold's, despite Usain's top speed of just under 28 miles per hour. 
But again, we're ignoring the muscle required to carry a full combat load for 12 miles. And this is where I get to introduce you to Captain Rudy Dambeck, the first JAG officer to be awarded the Expert Soldier Badge since its creation in 2019. Is this what you think a soldier should look like, End Wokeness? Well, let me tell you what he had to accomplish. To be approved to even be evaluated for the ESB, a soldier has to pass the Army Combat Fitness Test, qualify as an expert on their primary weapon, and be recommended by their chain of command. Once the evaluation starts, it takes five days to complete. The tasks include day and night land navigation, 30 warrior task controls, which can include disassembling and identifying the components of a Mark 19 heavy grenade launcher, M249 squad automatic weapon, and 50 caliber machine gun providing medical care under fire, treating an open head wound in a chemically contaminated, also known as a seaburn environment, camouflage and visual signaling techniques, and moving under direct fire. The test ends with a 12-mile march, which requires the soldier to wear a rucksack weighing at least 35 pounds, carry an M4 or M16, and complete the march in under three hours. This soldier proved his lethality without all of Arnold's muscles. Why? Because those muscles aren't necessary to be an expert soldier. As someone who's competed in a soldier of the quarter competition at the brigade level, I can tell you that knowledge of those warrior tasks and drills was the most important thing. When it came to the ruck portion of the competition, my lack of muscles was only a problem in my shoulder blades. It was my ankles that hurt the most. But if you can successfully fight the drive to quit, your body is capable of incredible things. And that does not require this physique. Anyway, let's move on to Arnold's arms. Is it useful to have that much muscle? Well, the heaviest weapon you're probably going to have to currently carry for a long time in a ready-to-fire state in the army is the M249, which weighs approximately 17 pounds. Do you think this much arm is required to carry 17 pounds? What's that? What if their arms get tired? It has a sling! What if they have to be loading artillery? Well, apparently this is how much muscle is required for that. What if you have to carry a wounded soldier out of the line of fire? Well, guess what? It's a lot easier to carry a soldier that doesn't look like that. That's 250 pounds, and then you add 100 pounds of gear on them, that's 350 pounds. Guess what's a lot easier than carrying 350 pounds? 250 pounds. Which brings me to my next point. These muscles are a bit overkill, and they actually have the potential to reduce combat effectiveness. Sometimes, as a soldier, you have to squeeze through small spaces, and I would pay money to watch someone with Arnold's physique try to climb in and out of an ASV. There's also the issue of supplying clothing and equipment to 2 million people with that physique, and good God, the logistics of providing the calories to maintain that sort of muscle mass in a combat environment. Don't even want to think about it. Now, don't think I'm trying to say that that kind of physique isn't useful in the right circumstances. It would be incredible in hand-to-hand -hand combat, for sure. Here's the problem. The Army as a whole has toned down that sort of training because most soldiers will never need to use it. For example, bayonet training used to be a basic training task, but not when I went through basic. That's not to say I have zero training on combatives, but it turns out bullets are pretty good at stopping a threat. And from quite a distance, too. Bullets are better than the knife at the end of the thing that the bullets shoot out of. Shocking, I know. Also, check this out. Wow! I didn't even have to hit the gym for that. That's how easy it is to shoot a gun. Boop, 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 boop. If you're not convinced yet, let me put it to you this way. If that physique won wars, the army would be issuing us steroids. But that's not what happens. In fact, when I worked in counter-narcotics, if I suspected you were using steroids, it was my assigned duty to investigate a possible violation of the Uniform Code of Military Justice, specifically Article 112 Alpha, for use of a controlled substance. That's a criminal charge. You can be discharged from the army for that. And while we're talking about physiques, which... Honestly, is all we've talked about this entire time. Let's look at physiques in the military over the years that won wars. The Revolutionary War. The War of 1812. The Indian Wars. The Mexican War. The Civil War. The Spanish-American War. World War I. World War II. The Korean War. The Gulf War. The Global War on Terrorism. Weird! I don't see any Arnolds there. What I see are soldiers, but we haven't even discussed non-combat rules. Do you think a cook needs arms that big? Okay, well, he did that one on his own. It was not a requirement. Do you think the IT specialists need to kick through the wall to get to the ethernet cables? Do you think a rifle in the hands of a trained, I don't know, weed dork nerd drone operator wouldn't be able to stop a 250 pound bodybuilder? <laughs> I do. And for the record, I use weed dork nerd drone operator as terms of endearment. Four more things. One, movies are often poor representations of reality. Two, most soldiers I've met are just high school graduates with fewer haircut options. 
They're normal people. They always have been. Being a soldier doesn't make you a hero. It just provides more opportunities to be one. And looking good is rarely the catalyst for those types of opportunities. The army injects us with a lot of things. The super soldier serum isn't one of them. Three, us investigators learn to trust our guts. And my gut tells me that end wokeness is more than they seem. The consistent quality of spelling, grammar, and format of the tweets indicates the presence of a good education. And this is why the account sticks out to me. A good education should prevent a person from believing these tweets, which tells me that these appeals to emotion as a replacement for facts are intentional. The account isn't defending their tweets either. They're just making new ones, which indicates a lack of personal investment in the emotions they are appealing to. They aren't trying to prove that they're right. They're trying to create a response. If this account is being run by a single person, congratulations on your impressive ability to be a terrible person. But if I were a betting man, this feels more like a group effort. The question then becomes, what would that group have to gain from this sort of manipulation? And four, you don't know that these folks aren't ripped under those uniforms. You see this guy? He's just a chubby, nerdy train conductor, right? Wrong. Look at this absolute unit. Look at him. Just check the, oh, just an inspiration. What an absolute monster of a man. I love it. Anyway, that's my rant. So until the next time, ladies and gentlemen, be good, stay safe.